WKU one and one on the day, having been defeated by Saginaw Valley and beating VCU. Uh, not sure on DePaul's record. I would think they're either one and one or zero oh and two. Should be a very evenly matched game. DePaul actually defeated WKU earlier in the year. Nick Johnson cheesing. Showing off a little bit for the camera before we get going here. Typical Nick. Ben, what do you think this game? Do you think that we will see the WKU that we saw in the VCU game, the aggressive tone setting WKU? No. Why so? That, I just don't think they have a collective consciousness that that's what they need to do. They did that last game because they saw, they saw, they saw blood in the water against um, – a really underpowered VCU team, and I don't think they're going to see that in this, and they're going to get intimidated. So relaxed, they're so, they're just cool. They're just cool people to be around. They're really nice. You can see number 10, who is clearly just having a good time with it. Yep, waving his arms around. Alex, what do you think? Do you think that we'll see a return to the aggressive style that WKU played with in the VCU game, or the passive style that we saw in the Saginaw Valley game? I mean, to piggyback on what you all said, uh, DePaul is not an intimidating team. Uh, they're known as kind of like the goofballs of the league. So I would hope this isn't a team that we have any fears going in. The only thing that I would think is just the – I would be worried about the kind of stress, people getting tired uh, from playing a full day. But I, I'm hoping to see that more aggressive Western we saw earlier. And I will tell you, Nick told us before the game that the – I think it is the winner of this game – plays JMU and the loser plays CMU. So I told Nick, never try to manipulate the standings because karma will always come back to bite you in situations like that. You try to play to win. You know, Western has only won their second legitimate game of the season with their victory today over VCU. So you got to go for the win. Let the chips fall where they may with the scheduling, and you'll go from there. Ben, do you agree? I mean, yeah, you don't you don't even worry about the standings. You don't worry about anything except for this game right now. In fact, you only worry about this point. You worry about your next throw, your next dodge, your next catch. You can't be you can't get confused by the forest when you need to be focusing on a tree at a time. Excellent point. Very philosophical. Great stuff for Ben Subcheck. Calling this game again. This is Jazzy Josh Raymer calling this game with Ben Subcheck and Alex Heichelbeck, two fellow WKU dodgeball alumni. Thrilled to have them in the booth with me again for this game. And a catch there by number 15. And it looks like that might have been a catch by Hunter Dickinson, but I think it came off a block. And it looks like we have a shot clock violation on WKU. So a shot clock violation. Third shot clock violation according to Alex Heichelbeck. Just one of those rookie mistakes you cannot have at a national tournament. We'll see if DePaul can do anything here but yell and make funny faces. Hunter Dickinson goes out there, the alternate captain for WKU on an attempted catch. Kind of caught him unawares there. I am seeing a lot more aggressive counterattacks than what we saw in that Sag Valley game. You have to admit so far. Uh, yeah, you can. But the thing is, they're still not throwing all the way from the line. They're, they're doing still some throws from half court, which you never like to see. But some good aggressive counterattacks and a good catch for number eight there. Um, and you always want to see that. I just wish they would get closer every single time, no matter what. Throw at people without balls and throw as close as you can. That seems like some pretty common sense stuff. Alex Eichelbeck doing just a magnificent job with the camera work for us. I like the brag. 
You don't like to brag, but you are doing an exceptional job, good sir. So, quick uh, count update for you on the 14 for WKU. It looks like DePaul has one, two, three, four, five, six. So nine, so 14 to nine man advantage for WKU. Thank you, good sir. So we now have rosters pulled up for DePaul. Should be able to give you some names. Because unlike some teams, they do have the numbers on the front. And number 51, Sam Murphy, Murph Doggy Dog as he goes by, goes out there. Oh, that looked like a foot shot on Nick. But he's staying in, so I guess it was not a hit after all. I think he was, he was claiming that it was from the ground, and I don't think anybody put up a, a big, big enough fight for him to be like, okay, fine. I think he would have gone out if someone had been like, no, seriously, that hit your foot. But nobody did, so he stayed in because no ref made an official call, and the DePaul kid did not make a fuss, so that's all there was. It hit you, but you didn't know if it hit the ball first or if it hit the ground before it hit you or ricocheted off that. So it's not necessarily like he's – because I saw he was sitting there going, like, did, did that hit me? Like, he's asking the other player, and the other player is like, I think it hit ground. And that's why he's, stay, he's staying in. So um, WKU is an incredibly honorable team. I think they've tried to be for the last several years, and all the way through its historic, prestigious career at Western Kentucky. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, let's see here. I was noticing number six, uh, who is Matt Schroeder for DePaul, has quite a cannon. So number 51. Sam Murphy has got an arm. He's the guy with the great bushy beard. That's most doggy dog. We already went through that? Okay, you were yes. talking about him. So uh, we'll see if uh, Schroeder can make some noise here with uh, Murph doggy dog on the, uh, on the bench in jail for the possibly the remainder of this point. About 19 and a half minutes left in this first half. Oh, and a great catch there by number eight, Peter Garwin. Takes out number eight, Josh Hicks, which is a huge loss. That's probably WKU's best player. Big Bird with the cross does not see it coming. Oh, okay, okay, so the ball. No, yeah, I think he, yeah, I think he got the ball up in time there. Players to Paul with eight. So an 11 to 8 advantage for WKU right now. Ooh, out, of out of bounds. Out. You don't see that called a whole lot because people typically keep their toes in. But sometimes, and like in that instance, he did jump out of bounds while dodging. And how is how is Josh Hicks back in the game? I thought he went out. Anybody know on that? I believe there was a catch, um, but I don't know where. He was at the back of jail, though, I thought. Well, Maybe the. Someone called him back in. Could have been the case. The I don't know. Excellent question. Yeah, Big Bird with a catch there. Brings back in uh, number 35 for WKU. Oh. Number 12, Brent Schinkel goes out there on a shot. Nice, nice throw from Matt. Number six on DePaul. Oh, we lost the scoreboard. This has happened before on this court. I think it's simply the fact that the plug has come out of the floor. You know, I'd say that gives us probably just about enough time for a word from our sponsors, Ben Subcheck. Today's game brought to you by Freddy O Tires. We use the retired rubber from dodgeballs that have been busted. So if you want rubber, and you need a, a new tire from Broken Rubber, Freddie O's has got your back. Thank you so much for sponsoring NCDA. That sponsor break done very well by Ben Subcheck. Thank you. That's a great I'm read. Not, I'm not crazy about the lack of puns. Uh, well, the, the idea was the to say was that there's used rubber underneath your death trap of a car. But, hey, I mean, if you want that recycling, if you're into that, Freddie O's got your back. Little known fact, Alex Heigelbeck, a fake sponsor snob. Especially at these Nationals broadcasts. Some people do wine, some people do food. Uh, I work in puns for made-up companies. Wow, nice catch there. Yeah, great point-blank catch there by Hunter Dickerson. Gets out number 11, Evan Kirking. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big get. 
Josh Wynn, number 44, coming back in for WKU. What? Ball's over, it looks like. Yeah, oh, shot clock okay. violation on DePaul. Remaining players left in for DePaul. Number six, Matt Schroeder. Number five, Tyler Hamilton. And it looks like number 17, what number? Uh oh, they're setting up some kind of W here. Can you get a jersey number on that last guy? Is that, uh, I don't think the no. camera is going to be able to pick it up. Seven, 17? We don't have one 17. put us in a Super 8. Uh oh Not good. Okay, we're back to default. Ah, oh, okay. okay. So he got a catch there. Tyler Hamilton did. But subsequently goes out. That brings back in number 89, Alex Watkins for DePaul. Nick Johnson there with the kill on number 89, Alex Watkins. Two players for DePaul left in. Well, I think 17 got hit. 17 got hit. I'm not sure why I walked back in like that. He's out. So that's it. Oh, okay. He walked back on the